We're here with Mike Royce. Okay. So, so right into the camera. You can look to me. Look to me. <laughs> we can have a conversation. This is just going to capture it. All right. Uh, so first, let's just talk a little business. So talk to me about the fact that you know the season got kind of split up. Right. Do, are, you, are you a fan of that? Because I know a lot of the cable networks are doing that. And yes. You know. Are, I mean, listen. I don't think anybody's a fan of it, but for us, it was this particular thing that we had to do because. The way TNT schedule goes, you can't have very many episodes that run in a row in the winter. So if we have any shot of being on in the summer, we had to sort of split the baby and have a few on in the winter and then a few on in the summer. Next time, if we're hopefully we do, um, we'll just have 12 or 13 on in the summer like a regular show. I think people are frustrated with the show because they've never seen a bunch of episodes in a row. Yeah. Even the first season, we had six and then the week after the first six, there was like an NBA game and there wasn't even a repeat. Right. So it was just like, well, did it get canceled? What happened? Yeah. And so c certain things I think have hurt us in that respect. I'm pretty hopeful that TNT is going to give us a shot yeah. at like getting people uh, 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 a chance, yeah. you know, to get sucked in over the course of a whole season. It's definitely been frustrating, but we did what we had to do. That's yeah. really the way it had to work. Well, and obviously you come to events like this, and the fans just love the show, and I see people tweeting about it. And what do you hear mostly from fans about? What, what are they connecting with the most with these guys? You know, I think people are learning that the show is relatable in a way that's not, uh, let's say, totally depressing. <laughs> I think when you hear midlife crisis, you just go, oh, it's a bunch of guys sitting around whining or whatever. Yeah. And especially if you hear that they actually sit in a booth and talk to each other sometimes, it may get a reputation. The problem with doing a show about midlife, I'm not, I don't even like to say midlife crisis, but about midlife, is people instantly see the cliched version. So I think that that becomes a hurdle you have to climb over. Yeah. I think now that we've had at least a bunch of episodes, scattered though they may be, uh, people are learning that hopefully we're I mean, presenting a non-cliched version and that really it's just a show, you know, there's a ton of shows about teenagers, there's a ton of shows about people in their 20s who couple up, there's a ton of shows about people in their 30s getting married and having babies and whatever the hell's going on. There's no shows about people a little bit older than that. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that much older, but you know, 40s, 50s, and there's plenty more life after that. Um, and things happen that have nothing to do with a crisis, as, you know, an identity crisis, although that is part of the show. Uh, things just happen in life. It's really just, I would say there's a lot of similarities to, you know, parenthood and uh, other just ensemble relationship shows. Uh, we're just trying to, you know, do our best in that sense. Yeah, and I was just talking to Brittany, and of course, you know, she's getting some story on the show too, so hopefully yes. you can get some younger viewers to connect with her. It's always been our goal, and we're trying yeah. to branch out, and, you know, I mean, the female characters are extremely important to us just because yeah. the, the name of the show is sort of focus on the three main characters, but but the, you know their their compatriots are always and the, the children. Yeah, <laughs> I'll call her a child. Um, they've all you know they came to play. They're all fantastic actresses. You know, well, and it gives it a different angle, especially for Ray's character, because now he's dealing with this daughter that's you know becoming sexually active. Right. I think, which I'm sure everybody can relate to. Let me take the opportunity to because I think some people. I think some people may have thought she was the character, uh -huh. was 15 or 16, you know, and that she was a little sure of herself. <laughs> okay. And uh, really, when we wrote it, we pictured her probably 17 going on 18. That okay. she's a senior, you know. And I'm not saying that makes a huge difference, but it does make a bit of a difference in terms of, um, you know, this is not someone who just went from, uh, you know, tween to uh, <laughs> screwing everything that moves, you know. Right. Um, she. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I think people were, were possibly perceiving her character as a little younger than, than she okay. was. Okay, gotcha. Um, if that helps anybody out. There. <laughs> um, yeah. And then what, what are we going to see the rest of the season, the episodes that haven't aired yet? What's, what's to come for the characters? You know, uh, it's mainly just, it just gets ramped up, you know, and, and our show is a fairly, um, we don't have any gunplay uh, yet. Uh, we don't have any, any crime solving and hospital things, and so we rely on the dramatic uh, elements of life. The way that our arcs work is they start to come to a head over the end, and this is the, so it's weird because it got split in two, this is really the end of a, of a big 12 episode arc, yeah. you know, the two mini arcs, but, you know. So, all I can say is things get more exciting. Um, that word takes on new meaning in our world. But I think and people are going to be very um, interested in We're hopefully surprised by where things go. Okay, so no Falling Sky crossover. 
I'll take whatever I can get. <laughs> <laughs> they want to spice something together right now. That's fine with me. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Mike. Have fun tonight. Thank you. Thanks.